Hi and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the compare object commandlet. Now this is very useful for a variety of different scripts that you might actually do in a real life scenario. I'm actually going to be giving a real life scenario with active directory groups. But first, we're just going to start with a very, very simple example of the commandlet with just two arrays just to compare what numbers are in one and not the other. Of course, there are other ways to do this without the compare object, um, but the compare object gives a very, very easy, quick result um, and can be very useful depending on what kind of scripts you might be writing, especially something like managing groups or managing accesses. Compare object will be very handy for you. So let's go ahead and let's actually start off our first example here. So we're going to create um, two arrays here. We're going to create an array called numbers one, and we're going to make that equal to an array. And we're just going to put the numbers one, uh, three, four, and five in here. And then let's go ahead and let's create a array called numbers two. And let's go ahead and let's put one, two, four, five here. So one of them has two, one of them has three, and we're gonna see exactly what happens here. So let's go ahead and let's type in our compare object. And for our reference object, let's go ahead and let's put numbers one. And then our different object, let's go ahead and let's put numbers two. And if we go ahead and we run this here, we are gonna get as our result, we're gonna get input object and side indicator. And the side indicator tells us which one um, that it belongs to. So here we can see two with the arrow pointing towards the uh, right hand side here. And we can see if we look at reference object will be the left hand side and difference object will be the right hand side. Uh, we can see that numbers two has two in it, but does not have three. And three is in numbers one, but not numbers two. So that is very, very important because if we go ahead and we rotate these, we're gonna see that the arrows here also rotate. So it is very, very important to actually know that the reference object will always be on the left and the difference object will always be on the right. That is a very easy way to think of it. Um, this way it will make things a little bit simpler. And what's nice is you can easily take these input objects and do something with it. You can store the results in a variable, which we're gonna see that very shortly. This was just a little primer example to kind of get into something that's a little bit more realistic something that you guys will be able to play around with a little bit more. So what we actually have here, as you guys know, we have a Active Directory server here. So let me just bring up our Active Directory server. And we have a bunch of groups here. Now let, what we're actually gonna try to do is use the compare object to manage our employees here. Now this is something that we have looked at in the Active Directory tutorial. If you followed that, you will be quite familiar with what we're about to do, but this is just for someone that might not have seen those tutorials and that really wants to get a good understanding of the compare object. So let's go ahead and let's go back into our virtual machine here. And we're gonna be managing the IT group here. So let's first off, Let's just go ahead and let's grab our Active Directory group here. So let's do get AD group. And we're gonna do identity is gonna be IT and our server is gonna be jack.ca here. So if we actually go ahead and we run this line here, we are gonna see that we get a group back, which is perfect. Now what we wanna do is we need to basically generate our numbers one and our numbers two array of users. What I like to do is I like to create one called users belong, which is a very easy to understand variable that's users that belong to the group. And what we're gonna say here is gonna be get AD user and we wanna filter on where that department is equal IT because I know that all of my 
the way that the Active Directory is set up, the department has the word IT in it. Therefore, everyone that needs to be in that IT group should be part of the IT department. And we're going to put the server as jack.ca. And all we need to do to make sure that we get the department, um, we can do the department here in properties. Uh, you can also do star if you wanted. Uh, that's a little bit extra, but uh, you can definitely do star if you're not too, too sure what variables you might need later on. Um, star is definitely a very good idea. Now, users currently in will be our second variable here. And for that one, we're going to do get 80 group member. So that's going to be getting the people that are inside that group. So we're going to do identity. We're going to reference our group here. And our server is still going to be jacked.ca. And now if we go ahead and we actually just run all of these lines here, we can actually see if I run users belong, we get employee one and employee three, which is awesome. And if I go look at employees currently in, we can see employee one is there, but also employee two and not employee three. So we should already kind of know what we should be expecting here. So let's go ahead and let's do the compare object. And we're going to do a reference object. Now for reference objects, what I like to usually do is put it as the users that are currently in the group. That is the reference group. It's what we're referencing in Active Directory of who's actually in there. And then the difference object is users belong. So those are going to be the users that belong to that group. Now, if we go ahead and we actually run this here, we will actually see our input object looks like this. And we can actually see that the employee three actually uh, is part of the users belong, but is not in the users currently in. And then the test employee two is not in the users belonging, but it is actually in users currently in. So let's go ahead. And what we're going to do, what I like to do here is I like to store the compare object results into a variable called results. You can store it as compare results or anything like that. Usually I just store it as results. And then what I like to do is I like to create a variable called ads. And we're going to make that equal to an open and close parentheses here. And inside the parentheses, we're going to do results type where side indicator is equal. And we know that the side indicator that we want is on the right hand side. So anything that belongs to the users belong. And then all we're going to do is we're going to grab the input object. Now we're going to see why we do that in just a little bit. And then we're going to do ahead and go ahead and do the exact same thing for the, as you probably guessed it, the removes here. So let's just rename this variable to removes and let's go ahead and let's change the side of the arrow. So if we go ahead and we run this here, we're going to see that for the ads, we actually get our whole user back. Now, if you remember, in results, we only saw really the distinguished name, but do realize that in the input object, it is the actual full object that's in there, which is really, really handy. Now, another thing that you would be able to do is you can definitely specify a property here. Now we could have specified Sam account name. And what that does is if we go ahead and we just run the compare object and then look at the results, it only compares the SAM account name. So this could be good if you already know you really want a specific property that needs to be compared. That is a great idea. In our case, we're just comparing Active Directory users so we can compare the entire user. It will know what to check with the primary key of that object, really what identifies that object. Um, but here, if we just go into the adds and removes, um, of course here it breaks a little bit because if we go look at results, that input object is now called Sam account name. So that is just something you do have to be aware of. It won't always be input object, uh, but because we're dealing with active directory users, I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to remove that property and we're going to just leave it as the entire user object. And then all we need to do 
is just a for each add. Um, actually, what we can do first is first check if there's anything in the adds variable and then for each add in adds, we can go ahead and add AD group member. And then we're going to do the identity is going to be the group. And then members is going to be our add because we know that the add is going to be the actual user object. And then we can do server is going to be jack.ca. And then all we need to actually do from here is copy this and we can paste it right below and then do a removes here. And then just for each remove in removes. And then change the add here to remove and then make sure you change this add ad group member to remove ad group member. And then one last thing that I like to add here for the remove, because it's going to prompt you, I like to add a confirm colon dollar sign false here. And that will tell it to just remove the user and not ask for a confirmation. So if we go ahead and we just look at this code again here, let's just go ahead and let's run these results. We're going to see that our results are going to be doing something here. And what we're just going to do is we're just going to comment these lines out. So we're not going to get the output to mess up here. So here, if we actually go ahead and we run this, we didn't get any error messages or anything like that. And now if we go ahead and we check our results, we can actually see that the results are empty. Now that might not be really, really useful to us, but what compare object actually does have as well is include equal as a parameter. So if you go ahead and add that parameter in there, and let's go ahead and let's just rerun that command and then look at the results, we're actually gonna see that the side indicator is equal equal, meaning that they are in both. So everyone that belongs in the group is actually currently in the group, which is awesome. Um, so that's really everything there. Now there is one thing to keep note with compare object. And let's go ahead and let's actually set up that scenario right now. And that is going to be, let's say our group is empty. Now this could actually be um, if the group is empty or the users that belong is empty. If any of the, um, if any of the reference object or the difference object is null, you will get an error here. So let's go ahead and let's just run this now. And we're actually going to see that we cannot compare the object because the reference object is null. So you guys might be wondering, what do we do in this case? Now, this isn't necessarily with the compare object, but it is something that I always like to have with the compare object. So what we first do here is we're just going to say if users belong dash and users currently in and then we're going to do a curly bracket and then we're going to go ahead and stuff our compare object adds and removes in there as well and now this is going to only do the compare object but then again we get into the scenario well we know that the user like the group is empty but we have two users that belong to the group how do we actually get that in there because as we're going to see um, the ads now one thing that you do need to do um, which is a good practice of course is just to make sure that you nullify your ads and your removes here so what I usually do is I'll do this at the beginning and that will just avoid any unnecessary issues that you might encounter with variables holding values so now if we go ahead and we run this entire thing here, we're going to see in ads, there's nothing there, um, which is actually exactly what we would expect in this case, because we know that it's null. So what this if is checking is it's checking to make sure that both of these objects have something in it before we go ahead and compare it. But what we need to do is else if now, if only users belong actually exists, what we actually want to do is generate our ads is going to be equal to users belong. 
And then what we're also going to have is else if users currently in, and then that will actually be removes equals users currently in. So what these do is the else if users belong will actually, that says that only users belong actually has something in there. Therefore, all the users need to be added in because there's no one in users currently in because we've already checked if both have people in there. Now let's say users belong has nothing in there, then it's going to go on to this next one, which is the else if, which means only the users currently in have people in there, which means no one belongs, which means we want to empty the entire group. So now if we go ahead and we actually run this here, and we go ahead and we look at our ads variable, we're going to see that we actually have some ads in here. And if we go ahead and we just refresh our Active Directory, we are going to see that we have members in there. Now, let's say we did the opposite and we're going to nullify the users belong here. So we're going to just going to do a typo here. We're going to do two T's here. Now, if we go ahead and we run this entire thing, we're again, we're not going to get any error messages. And if we go ahead and we refresh our Active Directory, our IT group is null so or empty. So that is one thing to keep in mind with the compare object. If you are potentially dealing with empty, empty objects, make sure to have these checks in place to make sure that you're checking to see which one is empty. And then you should already know which one is going to belong to which. And then you can just set up your ads and removes appropriately. And that is really it for the compare object that I have for you guys. If you guys have a commandlet that you guys would like me to do a quick tip video on, please let me know down below in the comment section. I will do my best to do every single one. And if it is something that is in a specific module, uh, just let me know what module and what version of the module that it's in. And then this way I could spread that commandlet that you guys like a lot to the whole community. If you guys haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And also, if you haven't already, hit that little bell icon to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.